This conference will now be recorded. All right, so just to give a quick recap of things that we were doing in the last week, let's start open up a notepad and let's quickly do a recap and then take questions and then start with this the session today. So let's do this. So we started off with a very simple thing called tenant in Azure. We said something called as an Azure tenant. We said, what exactly do you mean by a tenant? How do you create an Azure tenant? And after a tenant, uh, why do you need a subscription in Azure? And what is the role of multiple subscriptions under the same tenant? Why do you need something called as a multi subscriber model where a multi subscriber model can actually come into picture and etc. After this, uh, we were starting to tell what are resource groups. And we said, how do you go ahead and create, let's say something as a simple resource group. And what do you mean by a tagging inside a resource group? And then we were talking about something called IAM, identity and access management. Like how do you assign roles to a particular user on a subscription versus what will happen if you assign the same role to a user at a resource group level? How does the role assignment actually vary and all these things are uh, for this is where we actually started with the core Azure service, which is called as a storage account. And storage account uh, is for or is, is a service that is specialized in holding data that is an unstructured in nature. So this is unstructured data storage or you can also call it as a blob storage account, the binary large object storage account out here. Wherein you store the data in something known as containers. You need to create something called as containers and you then need to hold the data inside the containers. And we were also talking about how do you access this particular data, meaning you store the data. Now, how do you give access to that particular data? And we had something called SAS shared access signature, which can be generated at a blob level, which will give you access to only one particular blob at a container level which will give you access to all the blobs inside a particular container or at a storage account level, which will give you access to all the containers and internally the blobs inside that particular container as such. And then we were talking about something called as what access keys. Yes, storage explorer. Yes, that's true. Access keys and storage explorer as well. Access keys and storage explorer as such. Now my question to everyone is that what do you mean is the difference between a shared access signature and an access key? What do you get with a shared access signature and what do you get with an access key as such? Again uh, here. Yes, access keys can give you something like an admin privilege wherein you can go ahead do write delete update upload whatever it is a shared access signature on the other hand can let you let's say establish some kind of a control. You can let know or you can tell what is the kind of access that someone will have or should have like oh, is it only read is it delete is it update is it right what kind of a permissions if you want to control the access to your storage account then shared access signature is a way to go again if you accidentally share access keys to someone you can go ahead and do something called as a rotation you can rotate your keys you can regenerate your keys and if you regenerate something, a user who's using the old key will lose access immediately. You'll have to again reshare those particular keys as such. So this is what we were doing. And let me unmute folks a quick minute. And yes, any questions still here? Anyone, any questions still here? Online, offline, any questions till here that I can take? Yes, go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, you are an admin, you invited a person. When you invited a person, what kind of a role did you give him? Contributor. So contributor cannot invite someone. Contributor cannot, yeah, he cannot invite someone. The reason being, he is a contributor role. He doesn't have an user access management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. As in, even if he invites, even if he invites, Correct. He cannot create the role. So even if there is someone in your tenant without a role, they cannot really do anything with your subscription. Even if he invites, even if he, no, he won't get a reader at all. 
he won't even the person who the contributor will invite if he doesn't have a role he won't even be able to see your subscription let along the reader role he won't even be able to see your subscription he'll just be a part of your tenant so you as an owner you have to again go and assign roles to that particular person as such yes is any more questions earlier anyone any more questions earlier anyone any more questions earlier that i can take Okay, I'm sorry. Was that a question? I I didn't really get that. Hello. Can you? <coughs> uh, your voice is a little bit low, but yes, I can still hear you. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, while giving a SAS, we mentioned the uh, time and uh, date, right? Till when uh, it is valid. But after Correct. giving a URL, can we stop mm -hmm. it immediately? Like how we are doing an access key? uh no you cannot do that again uh you cannot stop a sas again if you want to stop a sas you still have to rotate the key you still have to regenerate that keys and once you regenerate it all the access keys and all the sas will be invalidated uh, so when we rotate the key uh, even sas will be invalid right sas you are correct even the sas will be invalid correct because okay. sas is nothing but a uh, extension for a key itself it's it kind of gets derived from a key so when you do a rotation even the sas gets invalid thank you thank you change the sas name as in where exactly i'm sorry correct in the url no you cannot because each and every url has to have a unique sas so even if you change the name and try to let's say connect to it it will fail yes any more questions here guys yeah was good 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 thank you uh, so my question is we generate sas at bob and container level blob and container mm -hmm. level uh, correct uh, when it comes to access key we generate at storage account level so when we can, uh, rotate the key it will invalidate the blob and containers sas simultaneously right yes correct it will invalidate the sas generated at any level will get invalidated if you rotate again got it thank you sir no problem all right so let's continue with the session today i'll just put people on on i'll just uh, let's say disable the option to mute unmute your mics i'll again give you the option once we are into the q and a session let's go here and let's create a new storage account i don't have one so let's try to so let's say create and it's just out okay so because of the weather i have please let me know yes so let's go here uh, let's try to create a storage account as well uh, as such today <clears throat> and let's say this is storage rd this is the name of the resource group that i'm creating when i'm creating a storage account <clears throat> and let's scroll down and let's give a name of a storage account like dev uber abc 000 us east 2 something like this so that the name can be unique so i'm just giving a unique name out here again uh, location cannot be changed after you create the storage account so if you want to change the region you'll have to delete and recreate the storage account back again and before creating or before let's say going ahead and creating a particular storage account in a particular location please check with your project you know whenever you are working in an organization you'll have your own project manager or you have a client please check with the client in or please check with the project manager in which region you need to create the storage account in as a devops engineer it's not our work to decide which is the region we basically we barely implement the storage account in a particular region as such but if you were asked to let's say suggest a region then please remember that it should be closer to your business it should be geographically and a politically stable region out here depending upon that you can select something like this let's say ecs or something like that again performance cannot be changed after you create the storage account standard and premium standard will give you something called as 
a HDD backed storage account, premium is going to give you an SSD backed storage account. Again, redundancy, you have multiple options like LRS, ZRS, GRS, RA, GRS, RAG, ZRS, and etc. I'll start with LRS. I'll initially start my journey with LRS. I'll say advanced. I'll say the access tier of the storage account is a hot storage account out here. I'm good with that. Networking, I'll say enable all this one. That is fine. Data protection. This is where I can select what is the soft delete option for my blobs, my containers, and etc. Uh, it can be from one day to 365 days 365 being the maximum one being the minimum I'll say I'm good with this. I'll say encryption. I'll come back to it at a later point in time I'll say next tags you can tag your storage accounts as well not not only the resource groups You can also tag the storage accounts as such and I'll say review and create this out So it's running a couple of validations It's understanding whether the details that have passed are valid or not and once I get a message called validation is passed, I can go ahead and hit the create button. As in when I hit a create button, I am sending a request to Microsoft asking them to go ahead and create a storage account for me. And in the back end, I am going ahead and sending, okay, fine. I'm telling that, okay, fine. This is the storage account that I need. This is the uh, resource group that I need. This is the region that I need. This is the replication that I need and etc. And I'm sending the entire request body to Microsoft telling that, okay, fine. This is the request that I want please go ahead and create a storage account Microsoft will accept this out and it will try to let's say go ahead and create a storage account for me so it's now validating a lot of things and finally it will end up creating let's say a storage account service let's say in that particular region for me out here once it's created once it's created the storage account service I'll go ahead and I'll create myself a container and then start uploading the data and then we'll look at the class today on what I mean on what we are going to do out here so let's go ahead into the resource. This is the storage account that I created. And within this storage account, I will provision one of the containers. So I'll just go ahead, take one of the containers out here. <coughs> I will say something like test container. And I'll say test container one. I'll initially start with one container out here. I'll say create it. And I can upload the files or I can upload the blobs <coughs> either using the Azure portal or I can use a storage explorer to upload it any which ways it's okay any which ways let's say I'm good with it but the advantage that you get using a storage explorer is that you can upload folders at a go using the Azure portal you cannot upload a folder at a go you'll have to upload let's say individual blobs as such so I'll go to the container I'll say upload and I'll select the files out here again uh, let me go into let's say that same demo out here that we had multiple files that I had I'll just select everything and I'll say open and I'll say upload now let's understand a couple of things out here now when you create a storage account service in let's say something called ECS2 in a replication tier called LRS in a performance called standard there are a couple of factors that influences the price of your storage account what are the factors that influences the price of a storage account is firstly the space you utilize for let's say 100 GB you have some amount of price for let's say 1000 GB you have some amount of price not only that you also have a price for every transaction read or write is it read or is it right you have a cost associated with it and that cost is also depending upon or that cost also depends upon what kind of an access tier your blob actually sits in you either have a hot you either have a cool in my case all the blobs that i upload sorry all the blobs that i upload are sitting in a tier called what hot uh, the reason being my storage account is itself in hot my entire storage account is in hot and while i was let's say selecting the storage account if i go scroll down into this particular storage service there is something called settings and under settings is something called configuration now using this configuration section i can change a couple of things for example i can change the replication from lrs to grs grs to ra grs and etc and i can change the tier from hot to cool cool to hot i can do this but my requirement or the requirement of a client is something like this 
all the blobs that I upload inside this particular container by default should be in hot by default they should be in hot because all this data is frequently being accessed so I don't want to let's say pay a lot to let's say the transaction cost I want to reduce my transaction cost but here's the catch I uploaded the data now let's take an paper website called the Deccan Chronicle or something like that some chronicle or something like this and as you all all know all newspaper websites also have or all newspaper agencies also have their own websites where you can go to that particular website and also read the newspaper so nothing but if I have a newspaper website something called Deccan Chronicle.com I'll say Deccan Chronicle.com storage account out here or some data holding device in my case I'm considering this to be a storage account and in this storage account they might have a container called in our case test container so they have a container called disk container and they can have multiple PDF files each and every day a PDF file gets uploaded and that PDF file will give you the newspaper of that particular day so in my case I have images but in this case you can have let's say multiple PDF files as blobs <laughs> So I have blobs out here that are being uploaded on a daily basis. Let's say on 27th I uploaded one, 28th I uploaded one, 29th I uploaded one, so on and so forth. On a daily basis, each and every blob is getting uploaded in the form of a PDF file. And you as a user, when you are, let's say, requesting for this, I mean, today's newspaper, all this website is doing is going into the backend storage account, taking the blob and giving the blob back to you in the form of a newspaper. And you are able to read it. So this is a transaction when you read it is a transaction when you upload it. It's a transaction when I upload it. It's a transaction and etc. So here's the catch. What's happening is that. Okay, let's do this. What's happening is that. Let's say I have uploaded some something called a sample one dot JPG, which is today's blog or today's let's say data or today's newspaper and I uploaded it this particular time called 27 June 2022 now over a period of time what I realize is that this blob is being frequently accessed or this newspaper is being frequently accessed for the next one month there are users who are coming to this particular newspaper they're frequently accessing it over the next one month out here so by 27th July 2022 the number number of number of people who are requesting for this newspaper is drastically going down because no one really has time to go back one month and let's say read all that newspapers and etc so after 30 days from a back end I want to change this access tier to what cool because what happens in a cool tier is that if I save blobs in a cool tier I can store my data without paying a lot of cost because if you look at the storage cost it is actually coming down to half if I am paying let's say 10 rupees for a blob to store in hot in cool I pay 5 rupees for the same blob to store so my cost is actually getting reduced so as a storage administrator for an organization called Deccan Chronicle or for any organization that you can think of I need to monitor this out and after a month I need to come here and I need to say change tier after a month I'm talking about I need to change tier and I need to change this tier to what cool and I need to save this out I can change a tier of a particular blob and if you look at this everything is in hot inferred meaning it is let's say hot out here but after a month I came here and I changed this let's say to cool in the same way I need to also monitor the sample 2.jpg let's say this particular data was uploaded on the 28th so what I need to do is that I need to come after a month which is 28th July and I then need to change this tier to what cool again so I need to click on this I need to change this to let's say something like cool 
I need to save this out. I need to do the same thing for the third blob as well. So what I need to do as a storage administrator is that on a regular basis, I need to monitor all my data and I need to change the access tier of my particular data to hot to cool, cool to let's say something else and all these things out. But my question to everyone is that, or let me let me unmute this out. Uh, my question to everyone is that this option is good. The option to change the tier from hot to cool, cool to hot, it is good enough so that I can, let's say, control what is the cost I incur on a monthly basis. But let's say, that, see, Deccan Chronicle is a very big newspaper website. It's I'm just not talking about one month newspaper. They will have newspapers that are running years and years. Let's say they are an agency that is there from 1900 and all those newspapers are there. Now imagine and answer this question is that as an administrator of this particular storage account, do you think you can monitor all those blobs and change the tier accordingly without having to miss it without having to let's say create an error? It is highly impossible. It's highly impossible for you as an administrator to go ahead, monitor each and every life cycle, each and every blob out here and change it from hot to cool, cool to hot and etc. Depending upon the timeline. It's impossible for someone to do it. Reason being Azure provides you an option called as life cycle management of your data. Now, what does this do is let's understand this out. Now life cycle management. It tells you that life cycle management offers you a rich, a rich rule based policy for your blob storage account use this policy for transaction and all these things what exactly does it do is that it gives you a programmatic way in order to handle your data meaning i can set some rules i can say that if the date on my blob is greater than 30 days meaning if i didn't modify my blob for the next 30 days please change it to cool or please change it to archive we'll talk about our arch archive as well i haven't spoke about archive yet so from hot by default azure knows that all your data will sit in hot reason being your storage account isn't hot so now i am telling microsoft that after 30 days or after 60 days from now go ahead and convert all my data into let's say something cool so that i can reduce my cost without someone having to monitor it regularly what i can do is i can add a rule here i'll say add a rule and here i can give a name of a rule the rule name can be anything i'll say rule 30 days something like this. I'll say apply this rule to all the blobs in my storage account. I'll say next. And now I'm saying if the last modified date, meaning if I'm not changing anything, if I'm not uploading any new data or if I'm not, let's say editing that particular blob and if the last modified date is greater than 30 days, meaning if you look at it, if you look at your blobs out here that is sitting inside your storage account, it goes by a timestamp called last modified date. If I go inside the container and if I look at my blobs, there is something called as a last modified date out here, meaning this last modified date is controlled by a transaction read or write. Even if I read my blob, even, even if I let's say go ahead and request for this particular blob, if I say view or something like this, the last modified date will be updated. The last modified date will, let's say, be updated to a recent date or the recent, let's say, time timestamp that you have, let's say, requested for. Now I'm telling if the last modified date, meaning if no one is touching the blob for, let's say, 30 days, then please go ahead, move it to cool. I'll say add this out. So all I did is I'm giving a rule here. And if you look at the rule, it is telling that apply this to every blob in your container, every blob in your storage account. And the rule here simply says that if the base blob is haven't been modified since the last 30 days, meaning if the blob isn't touched in the last 30 days, then please go ahead and move it to a cool. You can also add one more condition out here. You can have multiple conditions out here telling that what do you need to do if this particular condition is met. So what will now happen is that Microsoft will take 48 hours for the rule to come into action. So I apply this rule today at 826. This rule will come into action on the 29th 826. This is the first time when the rule will get executed. 
and when the rule gets executed it will check for all the blobs in your storage account in all the containers of your storage account understand what is the last modified date calculate tell that okay fine if the last modified date is greater than 30 days then i'll start converting the life cycle into cool i will automatically change this into cool without having or without putting a burden on you as an administrator this is what a rule will actually do and this is what life cycle management actually talks about any questions till here on what do you mean by a life cycle management and how do i apply it yes right Mm-hmm. Correct. Uh, again, after one year, it still stays in cool. It cannot be converted into hot. Meaning, you'll have to manually convert it into hot out here. Again, if you look at any newspaper website or if you look at any banking websites where you can, let's say, look at your daily transaction, they will not keep the data available for more than six months. After six months, you will have to request for that particular data like depending upon the usage again that's the reason i was selling depending upon the historical usage for example if i'm a banking website i will keep all my data in hot for next two years i can say that all the data should only be moved to cool if the date modified is greater than let's say 365 plus 365 720 days or 730 days or something like that two years so that two years you will still be able to do a transaction meaning you will be able to read all those blobs out here Again, even if you, let's say, go to a banking website like ICIC or something like that, you cannot, let's say, go ahead and look at your data for more than five years old. So I cannot, let's say, look at my transaction data, go back, let's say, to 2000, let's say, 11 and see what is the data. No, I cannot see that because they would have moved my data. They would have completely moved my data out here. So whenever you uh, go to a banking or whenever you, let's say, uh, take a subscription with Deccan Chronicle, there'll be an agreement that you sign telling that this is your data this is how your data will be kept this is how your data will be available so that's the reason i'm saying i'm just giving an example that here in my case it's 30 days i'll move it to cool because historically in my case people are only visiting my blog for the next 30 days people can still go ahead and look at this data i'm not telling you cannot so if you look at this one i'll say container i'll change the access level of this one to container and even though it is in cool if I give you the URL, you will still be able to access my data. Even though the blob isn't cool, you'll still be able to access my data. But I, as a service provider to you, I will have a greater cost that is, let's say, occurring at the background. Because when the data is in cool, the storage cost is less. Transaction cost is high. I'm okay to bear this. For a particular period of time, I'm okay to bear this. Anyone, any more questions here? Hi, Kiran. Uh, it depends on the client requirement. We have to change it, right? Or uh, hot or full. Santosh, go ahead, please. Hi, Kiran. Uh, hi, Kiran. Uh, depends on the client requirement. We can, we have to change it, right? Hot or full. Correct. Correct. Depends upon the requirement. You will apply rules. Thank you. Yes, someone Hello. offline had a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, guys, online, just give me a, a quick second. I'm just taking a question offline. Come back to you. <clears throat> Would it? Sorry. How do you give a life cycle for a particular container? Good question. I'll come back to it. Uh, good question. I'll definitely come back to it. On how do you give a life cycle for a particular container? Because you might have hundreds of containers, and different containers might want to follow different life cycles. We'll also look at that. Uh, yes, someone has a, had a question. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I was asking like once you access, let's say, like sample one, uh, mm -hmm. you're saying if you access it once also, it will become hot. I mean, is that the case here? I mean, it is. No, it won't go... become hot. If you, no, it won't become hot. What will it do is that if I access this once, the timestamp on this particular blob will be updated. And okay. from that particular timestamp, it will let's calculate, let's say, the next 30 oh. days again. Oh. And yeah, from, for the next 30 days, yes, for the next 30 days, if there is no modification on top of it, it'll change mm -hmm. it to cool. Okay, I understand. 